Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Custody Church and our service of worship for the 22nd Sunday after Pentecost. You're most welcome whether you're here with us in the church or whether you're uh, watching recording at home later. And I hope and pray that you're all keeping safe and well during these testing times. Welcome to our special service for the Church of Scotland's National Giving Day Initiative. The moderator of the General Assembly, Lord Wallace of Tankerness, has produced an introductory video, which will be what we're looking at now. Following that, I'm going to invite Ron Ferguson, the session clerk, to come up with a welcome message from the, the Kirk session. Martin Rinkert was a 17th century Lutheran pastor in the Saxony town of Eilenburg during the Thirty Years' War. Not only was the town besieged, but it suffered famine, pestilence and plague. It's said that at one point, Rinkert was conducting 40 to 50 funerals a day. He lived, but his wife died. And yet he wrote for his family a hymn of thanksgiving, which 400 years later we continue to sing, Now thank we all our God, with heart and hand and voices. And when we reflect what we've been through during the last 15 months of pandemic, it's worth bearing in mind Rinkert's call for us to give thanks. It's not always been easy. It's been difficult times, particularly for those who have lost loved ones or have suffered illness. Many people are still anxious about the future of their jobs, about lost education for their children or their grandchildren. Months of lockdown and closed churches have also given rise to their own problems. Uh, many people have missed the fellowship of worship. I know as a member of St Magnus Cathedral Choir just how much I have missed that regular opportunity to give praise to God. And let's not put too fine a point in it. It's also meant that there hasn't been the weekly offering and that churches have also lost income through not being able to host uh, fundraising events or not being able to get in rents for lets of the hall. Yet there's still so much to give thanks for. Thanks for the work and service of NHS staff and those in the care sector. Thanks for those whose ingenuity has produced and distributed vaccines in a remarkably short period of time. And within the church, thanks for those whose digital and technical skills have made online services possible. For those who have actually come back to join in worship, who perhaps had drifted away, or who previously actually had been physically unable to attend, but have now been able to join in during these past months. And thanks too for the work of congregations, supporting food banks, being able to run errands for the vulnerable who were unable to get out, or just that simple telephone call to someone who was lonely. Through National Giving Day, we have an opportunity to give thanks in a very real and tangible way. Churches can designate a Sunday in September or October for a special thanksgiving service and offering. The sum raised can be used by the congregation itself without assessment as ministries and mission income or given to support a worthy project at home or overseas. Please give generously. Please give thanks for the wondrous things God has done and for his countless gifts of love which still are ours today. I think Lord Wallace must have been listening to, to my head when uh, he made up his speech because a lot of what I'm going to say is, is already been covered by him but I don't think it'll do any harm just to repeat it. Um, as he said, today is National Giving Day and throughout the Church of Scotland each and every congregation was encouraged to participate in a National Giving Day initiative. It was designed so that it could take place, as Lord Wallace has intimated, on any day of our choosing between the start of September and the end of October this year. So at our Kirk Session meeting, uh, we decided and we agreed that we use this Sunday as our uh, day to support um, the National Giving uh, Day event itself and also to support our communion celebrations. Communion itself, of course, is a, cer a ceremony when bread is eaten and wine is drunk, showing our devotion to Jesus Christ. But communion is also a way for Christians to say thank you to God for Jesus' life and his death. So it seemed fitting therefore for us to be able to provide today 
an opportunity for everyone to reflect on God's presence with us, especially in these extremely challenging times, and in return, an ability to offer our gifts of thanksgiving to God. Like most congregations, we've obviously seen our income drop during this COVID pandemic. Today is designed in such a way so that all the money that's been received through this initiative remains within our congregation. And of course, as a kept session, we give our sincere thanks to all who have so freely and so willingly supported us in the past and continue to do so. Ongoing maintenance and repair costs, often quite expensive in nature, will always have to be met. So we welcome this National Giving Day as it means the giving of your money will allow us to provide this much needed financial support. But not just to maintain things as they are, but it also provides an ability to further develop the life of our church and it also provides an opportunity for our church to grow, both numerically and spiritually, as well as financially. So on behalf of our Kirk session, on behalf of the members of our congregation, I extend our sincere and grateful thanks to everyone taking part in this, our National Giving Day. Thank you. Many thanks all. As Ron has mentioned, uh, the service, the Lord will all be sharing the, the bread and wine together as we celebrate the Lord's Supper. So if you're watching the recording at home and you would like to join in with us, then if you have a, a piece of bread and some wine or some juice available. If you haven't and you, do, you would like to join in, then you might want to pause the video now and, and go and make sure you have some bread and juice with you. So my friends, let's come together and worship God this morning. This is a, a responsive call to worship. Um, I will say the, uh, the pieces in italics, if you could please join in together with the passages in bold. Uh, I've based our call to worship on Philippians chapter 2 verses 1 to 7. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then our joy is complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humility, let us value others above ourselves, not looking to our own interests, but to the interests of others. In our relationships with one another, let us have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who made himself nothing by taking on the very nature of a servant. I'm just going to read from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 to 8. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Amen. So we come together to worship God this morning. Our first hymn, which actually was introduced by the moderator, is that wonderful hymn written by the 16th century German pastor Martin Rinkert, where we thank God for his countless gifts of love. Now thank we all our God, with heart and hands and voices, who wondrous things have done, in whom his world rejoices. The hymn is, now thank we all our God. And if you're watching the recording at home, and you want to follow it in the hymn book, it's CH3 number 368 or CH4 number 182. I would suggest we stand and sing together.
Now, our uh, first reading this morning is uh, a National Giving Day Psalm. And this psalm was written by the Reverend Jenny Adams. Hear our cry, O God, listen to our prayers. The world is wounded by coronavirus, by isolation, and by inequalities made worse by the pandemic. There is so much injustice, God, with people excluded because of skin colour, gender and debt, and harmed by violence, wealth and climate crisis, here, nationally and across your world. Creation herself groans, crying out to you in brokenness. And while we cry out, the injustices and inequalities go on against your will, O oh God, though we confess not always against our own interests. Yet in our losses and failures, we know that we can cry to you and that you will listen to us and love us. We know that you promise to be with us always and that you are beside us all in the mess. We know that we can pray for your ways to come and that you invite us to join you in, the cha in changing the world. You are a faithful God, walking with us through 2020 and 2021, as you have walked with people for millennia. So in our woundedness, we trust in you for healing. In our unjust behaviours, we turn to you for transformation. In our uncertainty, we seek your presence to guide us to a new life. For all this, we give thanks for you, God of love, God with us, God of life, thank you. And may we hear your call, O oh God, to seek peace and justice, to love tenderly and fairly, and to listen and learn humbly for ourselves and our communities, for all people and your whole creation. May we hear your call, O oh God, and respond with all that we have and all that we are, being transformed and so helping to change the world. Amen. I don't know about, uh, about you, but at uh, this time of the year we all get bombarded with requests for financial support. The adverts on the television, the flyers posted through our doors, the begging letters from a whole range of charitable organisations. So it's difficult, isn't it? And coming into the time when we're thinking about preparations for Christmas and giving, um, then it's, it's a really, you know, there's, there's a lot of conflicting uh, things going on at the moment. Now, Ron's already explained the background to the Church of Scotland National Giving Day initiative. So hopefully when the letter and the invitation arrived, it wasn't just another unwanted letter arriving on your doormat or another email which ended up in the junk folder. The church has always played a central role in the community, right across our parishes. Communal worship in our church buildings has been very difficult since the start of the first lockdown. So we've all been working hard to keep things going, getting up to date with new technology and posting online services and reflections. Now, since our buildings have opened back up, it's been lovely to welcome people back inside the church. But not everyone are either able or feel confident just yet to return. So that's why we continue with our online services, so that people who are not able to come to the church are still able to worship with us at a later time. Even if people are not able to join together with us in worship on a regular basis, there are certain times of the year, such as Christmas and Easter, Remembrance and Harvest, when joining in with worship in church becomes an essential part of our family celebrations and preparations. It's also so important to be there for people during the, the sad times of their lives, when they're dealing perhaps with the, the loss of a loved one or battling with debilitating illness. And also, of course, at times of happiness, with a traditional church wedding or to welcome a new member of the family in baptism. We also have five primary schools within our two parishes, plus the academy at Afford, and engaging with the young people is so, so, so important. So the taglines for both of our parishes are, 
a welcoming church in the heart of the community and in the hub of the rural wheel, which emphasises our central role within our local communities. So I'd like to echo what Ron said. Thank you very much for your ongoing support. It is so much appreciated. And now we're going to come close to God with our prayers of approach and confession. All our prayers this morning have been written by members of the National Giving Day Planning Group. So at the end of our first prayers, I'm going to invite us all to say the Lord's Prayer together. So let us pray. Living God, we need your presence here on planet Earth. In these strange days throughout the world, we call on your Spirit to fill us with love. Help us to wash the feet of our communities, go in the second mile, give in the cup of cold water. Help our churches to be loving, reaching out to all who we meet. Holy Spirit, guide us in our finances to wisely use the resources that you have given us to plant fruitful seeds for your kingdom. Where there is division between us, heal us with your uniting presence. Help our churches to be communities where we live in peace. Not the peace of differences hidden from sight, but the peace of discussion and dialogue and mutual respect. Creator God, shape us into a people of prayer, whose first thought of the morning is praise, whose watchword is kindness, and whose last thought of the day is peace, the deep peace of God, nationally and locally. Let your spirit rule, so that our church may be joined in love and service. Faithful God, accept our humble thanks for all you have blessed us with. You have given us fullness of life. You guide and inspire us. You cover us with your grace day after day. You offer comfort in times of sorrow and a peace that passes all understanding, even in times of trial and uncertainty. Forgive us, Lord, when we take these things for granted. Remind us of the abundance that you have poured out on us. Help us to listen for your voice leading us, prompting us to answer your call, encouraging us to give back, to respond, in generous humility to your grace, goodness and mercy. Compel us to reflect something of your love for us as we give to enable your work in our communities, our nation and our world. Inspire us afresh this morning, Lord, as we pray together in the words that Jesus taught us. We say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now as we dedicate ourselves to work for the glory of God, we ask him to take our hands our voice, our will, and our love. In fact, to take our whole life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. And for this hymn, providing everybody can see the words, I suggest that we probably will remain seated for this. The next hymn is Take My Life and Let It Be.
Now I'm going to invite Ron to come and read for, to us from the Gospel of St. Luke. This reading is taken from the New Testament, from St. Luke's Gospel, reading from chapter 5, starting at verse 17, and I'm using the New International Version. Jesus forgives and heals a paralysed man. One day Jesus was teaching, and Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there. They had come from every village of Galilee, and from Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick. Some men came carrying a paralysed man on a mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. When they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd, right in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, Friend, your sins are forgiven. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law began to think to themselves, Who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, Why are you thinking these things in your, head, in your hearts? Which is easier? To say your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and walk. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. Immediately he stood up in front of them, took what he had been lying on, and went home, praising God. Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, We have seen remarkable things this day. Amen. May God bless this reading from his holy book, and may his name be praised forevermore. That's quite hard. Thank you very much. So yet another familiar story that some of us might have remembered from our Sunday school days. So what is it exactly that we remember about the story? If you just get the image in your mind, you can just imagine the house with Jesus sitting in the middle, talking to everyone. In the crowd, sitting around Jesus with some of the Jewish elite who are hanging on Jesus' every word, probably waiting to catch him out. So there was Jesus in the midst of this crowd, lots of hustle, and bustle, lots of noise and murmurings. Probably not everybody could hear exactly what Jesus was saying, so they moved in as close as possible. You could just imagine them. Then here comes the men carrying the stretcher with the paralyzed man. Who was he? We don't know. Were the men who were carrying him part of his own family? Again, we don't know, but we have to admire their persistence and their ingenuity. Who would think of dismantling the roof of the house to let the man in? And as we've heard in the reading, the men, of course, were rewarded by receiving Jesus' undivided attention. Now, the paralyzed man is strangely passive until the moment when he responds to Jesus' command to, to get up and take his mat. It's those who bear him to Jesus whose faith is remarkable and remarked upon. Those who have carried him through the crowd, not letting the seemingly impossible task beat them, and hauled him up to the flat room of the house and then broken through it. They were so committed, so committed to making contact with the one that they believed will change everything for him. The dogged determination of these nameless friends is quite something. Now in biblical times, the houses were built of stone and had flat roofs made of mud mixed with straw. Outside, stairways led up onto the roof. 
So these men carried their friend up the stairs to the roof, but they took apart as much as possible of the mud and the straw mixture, and they just made enough room to lower their friend through. Now it wasn't the faith of the paralyzed man that impressed Jesus, but the faith of his friends. Jesus responded to their faith and healed the man. For better or for worse, our faith has an impact on other people. Like positive or not so positive. So whether the man himself in the stretcher had a faith is not clear. But as we read in St Luke, the man went home praising God. If he didn't have a faith at the beginning, he certainly did at the end. So our focus in the story is immediately on the friends and the man who received healing. On the Pharisees and the teachers of the law who tried to catch Jesus out for what they called blasphemy. And our focus, of course, is on Jesus, proving the healing power of God and silencing his critics. Now, the poet Seamus Heaney wrote three poems relating to this gospel story, and one entitled Miracle. He bears witness to the dedication of those friends, drawn a parallel with his own friends who carried him to the ambulance after he had a stroke. In, in this poem there, their love is the miracle of both his story and the gospel story. And near the end of his life, Heaney, Heaney wrote another poem called The Late Comers. And this looked at the perspective of Jesus in this gospel story. The poem was written in response to an invitation from the poet and novelist John Dean to write about what Christ meant to him personally. And he need described this invitation as a real test of truth and art, but one worth making. So I'm going to read out the poem now by Seamus Heaney called The Late Comers. And just think about the words of the poem. Not a long one. He saw them come then halts behind the crowd. They wailed and plucked and ringed him and was glad they kept their distance, hedged on every side. Harried and responsive to their need, each hand that stretched, each brief hysteric squeal. However, he assisted and paid heed. A sudden blank let down was what he'd feel, and manning him when he met the pain of loss in the eyes of those his reach had failed to bless. And so he was relieved the newcomers had now discovered that they'd arrived too late and gone away until he hears them. Climbers on the roof, a sound of tiles being shifted the treble scrape of terracotta lifted and a paralytic on his pallet lowered like a corpse into a grave. Exhaustion and the imperatives of love vied in him to judge, instruct, reprove, reprove and ease them body and soul. Not to abandon but to lay on hands, make time, make whole, forgive. In the poem we have an insight into what Jesus himself might have been thinking and feeling, and his very human sense of exhaustion at the demands being made upon him. Perhaps there are echoes here in the, in the many Gospels where Jesus is described as needing to go away on his own to pray. In the poem we see Jesus weigh up his options in response to the bearer's persistence. But it is those imperatives of love that Heaney talks about. The decision to give the paralysed man the time that he needs. Now these imperatives of love about giving others time 
and the gift of human connection. Turn the story back to us. They think about our response to the presence of God in the midst of our worship, in our Christian community and in the world. The story is an encouragement to those who have played the part of the bearers. A word of reassurance about the healing power of Jesus to bring his loving concern into all situations of need. So how often, friends, do we do something or not do something because we just haven't got the time? It's a good excuse, isn't it? Oh, I'm too busy. Couldn't possibly do that. I just haven't got the time. But Jesus had time. Jesus had time for the paralysed man. How easy would it have been for him to rebuke the men for breaking into the roof? For heaping yet more pressure on him. Jesus will not turn away from us. He will always find time for us if we come to him in prayer. In our prayers of intercession. In our personal prayers at home where we, we raise to God the names of situations or of people that need love or attention. We can almost see ourselves like those men lowering that stretcher down through the roof. To the people that we hold close in our hearts in prayer, we are in effect lowering them down through the roof to the feet of Jesus. So on this National Giving Day we have so much to be grateful for. For a loving Father God who put the stars in place and created the mighty universe, yet still always has time for us. But let us give thanks to God who is always there for us. The master of all becomes the servant of all. From heaven you came, helpless babe, entered our world your glory veiled, not to be served but to serve, and give your life that we might live. Our next hymn is From heaven you came, helpless babe. Cause 
thanksgiving and intercession. So let us pray. Lord, we want to praise and thank you. We can use lots of big words, so we can simply tell you what we appreciate in our lives. We celebrate your people. We thank you for the young and the not so young. We thank you for the able and the not so able. We thank you for people from other lands and cultures who have broadened our life and horizons. Lord, we celebrate the many talents and abilities of our local, national and worldwide church. Thank you for the people we have interacted with personally. We bring them before you in our prayers. And for the people unknown to us who have made an impact in our church life and our life of faith. Thank you for those who serve others in their daily lives. On this National Giving Day, we pray that our time, talents and money can be used to further your mission. Help us to use our faith to sow the seeds of change and hope wherever there is poverty, injustice, abuse, violence or racism. Help us to embrace our gifts, to be courageous and generous with them, sharing and helping others through them. Generous God, we confess that we are often much quicker to express our grumbles than our gratitude, to focus on the situations which inconvenience us and limit our freedom, than to notice those upon whom our community and society depend. So we would give thanks for all those who at great cost to themselves have done so much through the months of lockdown to protect us and care for us and heal us. We remember gratefully before you those who have donned the face masks and the shields and just got on with the job so that the very fabric of society could be supported and our basic needs met. As we reflect on how much we owe to other people, make us generous in our attitudes and actions. Through Jesus Christ, in whose life and death, we see the fullness of your love for us all. Lord, we pray for all the world leaders who will be meeting in Glasgow to plan the way ahead to reduce our impact on the environment and to rebuild some of the lost ground. We ask you, merciful Father, to fill them with a spirit of reconciliation, of imagination and determination to make this world a better place for generations to come. I ask you, Lord, to help all those who are in difficulties today, the sick and the suffering, the anxious and the anguished, the fearful and the frightened. As we continue to see worryingly high levels of infection, we continue to pray for all those who are ill at home or in hospital, or in residential care. And for all those recovering from illness, we pray for our doctors and nurses and our healthcare workers and our carers. 
but also aware of people and situations who are weighing heavily upon our hearts. So in a moment of silence, Lord, we pray for those known to us who need your special love today. Give thanks for those who have died in faith, especially those known to us, who have entered into the joy and peace of your nearer presence. Grant that we may follow their example and come to share with them the glory of everlasting life. Merciful Father, hear our prayers, both spoken and unspoken, offered from the darkness and the hope of our hearts. Amen. And now as we move into the celebration of the Lord's Supper together, uh, I'll invite us to sing our communion hymn. Lord, we have come at our own invitation, chosen by you to be counted your friends. Yours is the strength that sustains dedication. Ours a commitment we know never ends. Again, it might be a new one to you, but I'm sure, I am sure you will know the tune. So the hymn is... Lord, we have come at our own invitation. If you're following it in a hymn book at home, it's CH4 number 638. So as we dedicate our gifts to the glory of God, let us pray. God of grace, on this day of national giving, we hear your call to generous giving in the way that you meet our needs each day and in the peace you give which passes understanding. Having received so much, we offer all that we have, our time, talents and money for your kingdom. Bless these gifts for the work of your church. And now as we approach the table that the Lord has laid out for us, let us profess our faith by saying the Apostles' Creed together. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From then he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now I'll invite you all to come to the Lord's table which he has prepared for us. Christ our risen Lord is our bread of life and our cup of salvation. We eat and drink of him in prayer, praise and communion, foretasting the feast of heaven and hearing again the promise of eternity. We pray that as, as we are sustained so we will find words of life and ways of salvation to speak and to live, that others who are hungry in the spiritual desert of sorrow and doubt may know peace and light in their lives. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. If we claim to be sinless, we are self-deceived and strangers to the truth. If we confess our sins, he is just and may be trusted to forgive our sins and cleanse us from every kind of wrong. Almighty God, our Father, we have sinned against you and one another in thought and word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to correct what we are and direct what we shall be. May God forgive you your sins, strengthen you by his Spirit, and keep you all in life eternal. Lord, you have assured us of your continuing love and grace. Help us now in faith, hope, and love to share in this worship to your honour and glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us now hear from St Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, the, the words of the institution of the Lord's Supper. It's 1 Corinthians 11 verses 23 to 26. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. But whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So this is the Lord's table. Our Saviour invites us to share the feast that he has prepared. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with us all. Now, for those of you in the church, if you would like to carefully take the, the lid off your cup and the, take the piece of bread out of the, um, the packet and put it on the plate, please. As the Lord Jesus on the same night and he was betrayed took bread and wine. I take these elements of bread and of wine, the produce of the earth and the fruit of human labour, to be set apart from all common uses in this holy use and mystery. As he gave thanks and blessed, let us draw near to God and offer him our prayers and thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God, which is right to give our thanks and praise. 
It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, for the majesty of your glory, the wonder of your works, the riches of your grace. Therefore, with your people of all places and times, and with the whole company of heaven, we proclaim your greatness and sing your praise in the song of the angels. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit to bless us and these your gifts of bread and wine, that in communion with Christ our Lord we may receive his life and remain his glad and faithful people until we feast with him in glory. As we share in the body and blood of Christ, may we become a living sacrifice, dedicated and fit for your acceptance, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Here we offer and present to you our very selves to be a living sacrifice, dedicated and fit for your acceptance. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. According to the holy institution, example and command of our Lord Jesus Christ and as a memorial of him, we do this who in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same way after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup, is the new covenant sealed by my blood. Whenever you drink it, do it in memory of me. So these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take, eat. This is the body of Christ which is broken for you. Do this remembering him. The body of Christ, which is broken for you. This cup is a new covenant sealed by Christ's blood, which was shed that the sins of many might be forgiven. Drink from it, all of you. The blood of Christ, which was shed for you and for many. On the evening of that first Easter day, when the disciples were together behind locked doors for fear, Jesus came and stood amongst them. Peace be with you, he said. And then he showed him his hands and his side. And seeing the Lord, the disciples were overjoyed. Jesus said again, Peace be with you. And the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with us all. Just pray. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Loving God, we praise you for your goodness to us at our Lord's table. You have fed us with the bread of life, made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth, and assured us of your everlasting love. Gracious God, we give you glory, thanks and praise for the dying and undying love of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. 
In your great goodness, you have brought us into communion with him and with all who love him and made us heirs of your everlasting kingdom. By your grace, may we continue in this holy fellowship and live to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lamentations 3, verses 22 to 23. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. So in our final hymn, we sing that of that faithfulness in Thomas Chisholm's much loved hymn. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, you mercies I see. All have I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. So I suggest uh, we stand and sing together the hymn, Great is thy faithfulness.
So many thanks for joining us for our morning worship here in Kushni. Thank you to James for the prayer for us. Thank you very much indeed. So many thanks to everyone who were able to join us here in the church uh, for our National Giving Day service. And thank you in advance for your generosity. Thank you also to everyone who were not able to come to the service but have either handed in or sent in any donations. Again, many thanks. So much appreciated. We'd also like to thank Ron for his message at the front and obviously for, for reading for us and the Kirk session of Kushni and Tuk Parish for your help with the invitation letters and your help with the service and of course earning our treasure who hopefully will have lots of donations to uh, count. Our service next week, being the, the fifth Sunday of the month, will be a joint service as usual but, but, this service marks the first of our joint services for the new parish grouping. So, the parishes of Cushnian Tuk, How Trinity, North and Upper Donside will come together for a joint Harvest Thanksgiving service, which will be held at 10.30, and this time it's being hosted by the congregation of North Parish. So it will be held in Rhiney Church. But in the future, it will rotate between the different parishes. Now the service will be led jointly by the Reverend Regine Sheen, the Minister of North, uh, Reverend John Cook and myself. The service will be recorded and posted as usual onto Facebook and YouTube, hopefully for six o'clock or soon after on the, on the Sunday evening. As usual, if you're in our email distribution list, I'll send you out more details throughout the week. Now, as we come to the end of our service, I have a responsive benediction. So, again, can I ask you to please stand for your honour? <clears throat> for the life that you have given us, and for all the good things that it contains, we praise you, Creator God. For all those you have made, sisters and brothers of every kind, we praise you, Creator God. For the way that you hold us all in your love, gifting us even your own Son, we praise you, Creator God. Send us out to share that love with open hearts and open hands. We glow in the glory of our loving Creator God. To do his will. May the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us and all who we love this day and forevermore. Mm -hmm.